So, welcome. Um, I would like to have a quick survey, and you can do it in the chat, and then um, let me know um, who has had a chance to watch the YouTube videos. Got a few yeses. Okay. Four, five. Nope, somebody missed it. Okay. <laughs> I haven't had a chance myself. All right, they were linked on the handout um, page. Uh, I will I grab it. Will. Thank you. <laughs> that way I don't have to. Yep, no worries, I got it. Um, so the, the handout page has both links to the individual videos, there are only four, um, and um, a playlist for them in case you want to throw it on. Um, it's about 20 minutes. And it's a lot of me blathering on while stitching, but hopefully shows you how to do the stitches. If you had, looks like most people didn't do it. Okay, that's fine. Um, I was really hoping people would have had a chance to see them ahead of time because I wanted to talk more about surface embroidery. But um, that's good because I have a way to show you what I'm doing. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get there when we get there. Um, who has some experience with embroidery? Okay. I do. Yes. Um, who has some experience with doing surface embroidery, like detached buttonhole? Um, anyone? I've yeah. attempted it a couple times. I will take attempts. <laughs> yeah, um, not, and, not much. And just to let everyone know, you can go off mute to to respond. Yeah, happily. Um, try to monitor whether other people are also speaking, uh, so we don't cut each other off. But yes, please. I'm embroidering a Christmas stocking right now. So I've got some pine cones that have some petals all over it that stand out from the piece. It's mm -hmm. fun. Good. I will take that as surface embroidery. Um, and last question, who has worked with um, threads like silk and then threads like metallics? Metallics, yes. Silks, no. Okay. I've done both. Mm -hmm. Silks, yes. Metallics, no. Okay. Again, I will take it. And a little metallic, not very much, a long time ago, no silk. All right, so just while I'm sort of vaguely drying off my hands because it's humid and humidity is the death of hands for embroidery um, because my hands get gummy and gross and I hate it. So I'm constantly washing my hands, which is good for my health, um, but also means that my hands feel gross right now. Um, so um, what you can remember from lace work is that during um, outbreaks of illness, lace workers and probably embroiderers, though I haven't heard it, um, tended to fare better. And our best guess is because when you're working with linen threads, you have to have clean hands. So they were probably washing their hands more than was common. So wash your hands. Um, okay, so way for silk. Um, I am going to give a link in a moment to, I bought a whole bunch of this silk at um, Penzik a number of years ago. Thank you. Um, bought a whole bunch of this silk at Penzik a bunch of years ago, uh, but I recently found a, which is to say a friend of mine um, brought me to, brought it to my attention, um, a site where I can buy uh, bulk of this, and I mean bulk of this, um, so I'm just going to order a whole bunch of it in black for black work and in white for dyeing um, from China. So it'll be like super slow and I accept that. Um, so I will share that link. Uh, the, the site is AliExpress. Um, and so if you happen to want to get into silk, but at a low cost, uh, I think it was something like $6 Canadian for 20 stains of this. Um, so it's not that much. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I haven't checked into shipping and I haven't checked into the rest of it yet. Um, it was sort of friend of a friend recommended it as she gets a bunch of stuff from there. So 
Um, I can't personally recommend it. I can say at least I have found the silk that I bought. Um, so I will be able to get more. Um, when you are working with silk like this and rayon actually as a decent analog for silk, um, some people hate working with it. Um, yes, one moment, please. I'll just actually pop that link in. Um, so here is the link for the um, black and white. Um, Thank right. you. They come in bundles. Um, have a look through. It is a rabbit hole um, because they will come in colorways. Uh, and as near as I can tell, you are buying one of those colors in 20 skins. So if you really want a particular shade of red because you're going to do um, an entire uh, jacket or an entire um, well, then yeah, get a bunch of it. I can't guarantee about it, yeah, but get a bunch of it. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you're into dyeing at all, get a light color or get white. Try playing with it. Throw it in the Do it. Um, but this stuff is um, a little bit uh, catchy, grabby. I don't know if I have, sorry. Oh yeah, great, this is good. I just want to a um, poster and you might be able to see how it's a little bit glittery there, like catching on something. Okay. So that, that is where a few strands, individual strands of silk, because this is um, supposedly 16 strands thick, um, just caught and either pulled or broke. That doesn't mean that this piece is ruined. It just means it's annoying to work with in that spot. So I can smooth it down with water. I don't like doing that when I'm stitching, but if red is being annoying, that'll go. Um, and it will keep it fraying, especially if I have an annoying spot. Um, there's also modern projects, uh, products like thread conditioners, which do work, but I don't like them. The water at least will just wick away um, and evaporate. Um, rayon especially, if you want to work with rayon, which is a very good cheap um, analog to silk, uh, if you can't get your hands on silk or are thinking, I don't want to go there, um, then uh, use rayon, but use water because otherwise it's hateful. Um, so that's my, my thought on that. Um, you can also use uh, beeswax, but I don't on silk because I haven't found it helpful. Um, beeswax is really helpful for sewing threads, not so much for embroidery threads. I tend to find it just mucks everything up, gets caught in my linen, and I hate it. So. It also dulls the silk, I found. Yeah. Like it, it takes away the shine, and that's why we like silk, so mm -hmm. not helpful. Your silk will at some point become less shiny. Um, for anyone who hasn't worked with silk before, uh, next time we get to actually be in person, um, then head up to someone who has one of those really cool embroidered bags, um, or uh, I think my hat is a good example, although it's suffered. Um, and ask to see, don't just grab, ask to see something embroidered like their bag. Um, and ask as well if you can touch it, uh, to see that once it's been um, worn out by the hands and, and the clothes, once it's been washed, um, your silk is way less shiny. Uh, and so if it matters to you that it stays shiny, keep that in mind. Um, rayon might actually be a better bet if you want it to be shiny above all else. But correct them. We usually like about silk because it is shiny and pretty and it has this beautiful luster. Like, even in my crappy video hall, you can see the depth of color. Um, so that's what we like about silk and we want to keep that. But I am a big fan of water for when my silk is being a jerk. Um, that said, while I'm here, um, cool. All right. So I am going to grab first. 
you. Um, this is a goal work class that I took at um, during May. And the threads here are really expensive that we were allowed to use. Um, that, well, we bought, but it's beautifully uh, fake gold foil wrapped around the thread. Um, very well done. Way above my price range for doing anything big. So, um, I have the MC Gold. Um, it, they've changed the name of it to, um, oh gosh, Mune. Um, you can actually order it from Michael's if they have it in stock, but it's, you have to fight in like the metallic colors and then they have several colors in there. It is not the same look. However, at a distance, um, it certainly will do. And also at a fraction of the price, it'll do. So um, for instance, this is done with the DMC gold. Crap lighting, sure, but that would mimic distance. We're gonna get closer. You can see that it's a little bit more fractured than the um, other goals. But I try to focus closer. Um, really, it just means the glitter is more, which is kind of nice. Um, but important things to keep in mind. So let's take a moment and hmm, got myself in All right. Sorry, I'm just going to jump back and forth because I am talking about thread a lot. Games, this one has been through some hard times and cap. Um, that's fine. If you can find the edges of it, you'll be fine. Um, I need to be able to tell the difference between my colors. So I laid them all out, determined what color they were, and numbered them. And then put little tags on them. Um, the handy part about this is that I can take this, feel where that is pulling. Oh, I could have seen it a second ago. There we are. Put that on the other side. Don't just keep pulling. Figure out where it's coming from. Fix your skein. Otherwise, it shrinks in on it. Oh, it's awful. Okay. Usually, when you are embroidering, you want to have a length no more in your forearm. I have long forearms, but I'm also um, one of the fast moves to rolls. So with this, because I know what I'm doing, I will let myself have a longer length of it. If you don't know, don't do it the first time. Even with um, cotton embroidered floss, it's a good idea to use something closer to the length of your arm. Part of the reason you need a long length is because you don't want to fling your arm into the air and stab the person next to you. You also don't want to um, be having to pull lengths of this out. Anyone who has done things like nail binding um, has probably experienced why shorter lengths will cause you less frustration in the long run. Now, I'm gonna cut it so I can show you how I'm gonna go this one. With this, I'm gonna use a double. And I happen to know that this is my meter. Okay, sorry if you can join us. Um, again, I'm going to play last and loose with the rules to find the length that suits you. So also, everything I tell you, if you want to try uh, doing what I tell you not to do, try it. And if it works for you, do it. If it doesn't work for you, experience that and I tell other people okay, this is what didn't work for me. Um, I'm just going to grab one of my extra needles. I really like blunt needles. Um, that's why I can do this without stabbing myself too badly. Uh, I believe this one is a 26. Um, I can't always tell apart. Uh, when I bought these needles, a whole bunch of them in a little Envelope sleeve, which is what's inside here. I put them in a pillowcase, put the sleeve in, and now I can look at the sleeve and it says, Oh, these ones are 28. Um, find a needle that works for you. 
I really like, like I said, blunts, which are sometimes called tapestry needles or cruel needles. Um, and the gauge size, um, sort of like knitting needle size, there's American sizing and European sizing and British sizing. Um, at least it's really easy to tell when those are different because um, a 26 and I think a 12 are very similar to each other. I don't remember what the American sizing is. Um, so just find what you like, use that. My big rule is that you have to be able to thread your needle and you have to be able to pull your thread needle through your work. Uh, and if you can do that, congratulations, you can stitch. So I'm not going to tell you what kind of needle to use. I'm not going to tell you what um, size you have to use. Um, do what makes you happy. Also, if there's a particular um, style that is associated with what you want to work on, do that. Or threading needles. Um, I was taught this when I first joined my embroiderers guild and it changed my life. So I fold this in half. I have my needle. Well, I may not be able to do this first time, but I have the end of my thread poked into my press into my fingers, and I'm going to do a medium nerve test and pinch. Um, and then I'm going to bring the eye of my needle, which is very long because this is an embroidery needle, to my fingers. I see they line it up properly. I should be able to open my fingers, and my thread goes through. With the silk, I may not catch all those turns. So what I'm going to do is very gently pull the ends, pull it through. Uh, did that make sense? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, so handy uh, way to thread needles. Then the other thing. All right. I'm going to try with my video set up here. Um, Okay, one, two, uh, please start video. And use, use the camera I tell you to use. Oh gosh. Yes, that is the one I want. Okay. We're going to use nature's sand. Um, would you be able to thank you? Don't mind my messy lap here. Um, go back. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it through. And the trick here is that I'm going to attach on the back because if I want to do a chain stitch, um, I'm going to come down close to where I want to be, if I'm going to do a different kind of stitch, I may not want to cut the same spot, but I want to do a chain stitch. I want to attach my thread. There it is. Make sure I caught my thread. Number of times I accidentally pulled it out because I didn't make sure. And then speaking of attaching my thread, make sure. The first stitch to chain stitch is usually going to be awkward. Um, classically in chain stitch, you're supposed to go through the same hole. Honestly, if you end up in the hole next to it and it doesn't really show, I'm not going to beat you over. So, we can continue that way. Um, we'll switch back together because the uh, one. All right. So, putting that aside, I just want to quickly mention about thread length for metallic. Again, you're going to do what makes you happy. Um, this is quite long for um, the metallic that I have been doing, it is approximately my elbow to my, I don't know, goose finger. Um, it's a bit longer than it should be. Um, sometimes I do end up with uh, the ends of my thread getting annoying as badly. I do play a lot of fried chicken, but I'm a very stubborn person and I'm willing to do that. 
know that you may also end up with that problem. If you don't like um, threading your needle, having to fight with unclean ends, so those like rough ends that just don't fit through, yes, you can lick your thread. Um, it does degrade the thread a little bit because we are acidic creatures. Part of why you have to wash your hands. So if I can't, if I just can't thread it, the silver needle, of course, I will be able to. I just can't thread it in my usual method. That's fine. Fold it over at the end. Of course, I didn't fold over them. Fold it over your needle. Get a little press. And those should go through. And if you don't immediately pull up the other end because you got it caught on your hands, then you can just cut your Um Gold thread, uh, I work with shorter lengths. Um, if I'm working on just a service stitch, like if I'm, I'm filling a um, area detached buttonhole, or when I'm doing the um, double ladder. This is almost, uh, not almost entirely on the surface, like you go under, but there's a lot of wrap on the surface. Uh, I did start with short lengths at first, and I found it really annoying to constantly be um, retention and cutting new threads. So I decided to try using a longer thread, and mostly didn't take it. So um, please err on the side of more conservative for the length of your thread you're using a metallic doll. Um, just for your own peace of mind. Um, and then when you feel comfortable with it, go ahead, use longer lengths because um, I believe in experimentation, but I also believe in not driving yourself crazy. So, um, we'll come back to that. Next point, just a prep point, is uh, pattern transfer because this was um, something that came up when I was talking ahead of the class. Um, I like to use either a light table or um, if it's a nice day, like I said with um, I taped, a, my light table was too small. Um, and it was a large pattern. It was just annoying to try to do it on the table. So I taped my pattern to the clear plastic bin lid of a storage bin, and then I taped my fabric on top of that. Uh, taping fabric, not easy. And then I sat out in um, on my balcony on Sunday um, so that I could get the sun, and I had to prop it up so that I could get the sun coming more from underneath than on top. People also regularly use it on the window, but I don't like standing there with my arms up to trace it. Um, I didn't know what pattern pieces I might change. Um, okay, let us know when you back. Um, uh, I didn't know what pattern pieces I might change, so I decided to do it in pencil. I don't recommend this. Um, my hands will wipe the light, which is the feature I want it, uh, but also I don't get to see it anymore when my hands wipe it away. Um, and some people find that the carbon on the pencil does um, make the material a little more dirty. I find in most of the occasions that I've done that, it wears it enough that I don't mind, but for some people it is a problem. So, what are our options? Um, you can use a ballpoint pen, and you want to test first. You always want to test first uh, on your fabric, on an area you're not going to stitch. Um, does it run? Does it bleed? And if you get it wet, um, will you hate yourself later? While you're at it, uh, test the color fastness of your thread. Does it run? Does it bleed? If it gets rained on or peed on by a cat, are you going to hate yourself if you're no longer have a favorite child? Um, so if you don't want to use a pen, or not a uh, cheap little ballpoint pen, absolutely have done. These are amazing. Um, it's on my content. Um, very thin archival quality ink and is probably the best mode equivalent for um, periods, late periods, I know, um, embroidery transfer, which they would have done either um, tracing 
or for 10 pounds. Um, all right, on 10. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, it sounds like we're having some audio issues. I'm not sure if it's on your side or if it's on my side. If multiple people can't hear me, it's probably me because I'm far away from my. No, it's not hearing you. It's the audio gets all kind of scrambled. So I'm not sure if it's just, but it sounded okay just now. Okay. I'm going to put it there so you're at least closer to me. Um, so, micron pen. Um, excellent quality. And so, late period method is, like I say, either trace if you could or prick and pounce, which is you have um, a a version of your pattern with little tiny holes in it and you dust um, almost like a stencil. I don't know, did we all do that in the 90s? Um, and then you would take those holes and you take the dots and you join them up with ink on a brush. Instead, you can use uh, a micron pen and it doesn't bleed um, and it doesn't wear away. So if this is a pattern that you're thinking, I want to work on this for an hour every week for the next five years. This is your friend. You don't get to change anything, but that is your friend. Um, if you know that you want to work on a piece relatively quickly, uh, but you don't know what you might change, um, quilting pads. They are designed to uh, wear away, wash away, or um, some of them are uh, iron away, so they disappear with heat. Check out what you have. There are usually multiple options in quilting stores. Um, and again, test. So um, this one is water erasing, which was what I wanted. Um, I bought it for a project where I'm using wool, um, and I love it. I do occasionally have to um, go back over because I sweat or um, it's humid in the air or I'm slow so I'm not stitching as fast as I thought. Um, don't be afraid to go over your pattern again but you want to test especially with the water racing ones is it going to damage the fabric or the thread if you expose it to water. Um, for the heat erasing ones um, put it on something, iron it, check it doesn't damage other ones and then put it in the freezer. Um, and find out, does it come back if you freeze it? Because some of them do. Um, and then the ones that wear away on their own, uh, there's really only time to test that. Um, my mother uses those and she finds that uh, they're sometimes inconsistent in how long they take. Um, so, um, I like them. But they are very much for mileage, and they vary, and they fit an appropriate pattern. So decide what is best for you for whatever your pattern is. Um, the other method that we got um, is uh, yeah, for hand number. Um, I also done actually did this through tissue. So you can use Solvi and other dissolvable uh, pattern transfer fabrics, or you can use cheap tissue paper if you are a cheap tape like me. Um, and so you transfer your pattern, you just trace it onto your tissue paper, you baste it onto your piece, you very carefully don't tear it, um, it's really best if you have it under tension, and then you stitch through. And then you spend hours afterward with tweezers pulling out any pieces that didn't come out, but then you didn't have to um, have a light box method or put in pounds method. And this one is good for if you're going through heavier layers of fabric um, and you can't necessarily see through it, then we really want to get detail. Stitch through and then just tear away. Um, so, favorite option. Um, pattern resources. Uh, there are lots of them. So, depending on what types of, of materials you want to make. Um, I'm presently making a wife, um, which I bought the pattern again, ten six years ago, um, from, it's not near me, um, 
like the this particular pattern is no longer available, but they have other ones. Um, from a historical recreation um, site where they um, take, if not a coin pattern, this is actually from a, an embroidered panel that might have been used for um, a pillow or something. It had small amounts of stonework, so it wouldn't have been ideal for a garment. I'm changing that as I work on it. Um, so there are definitely SEA geared um, reproduction patterns that you can get. Uh, we tried with the headphones, <laughs> um, it didn't work. Uh, that's more that's for more thing. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it, it, there are other uh, methods um, or other, other places, but honestly, um, have a look when you can in the library. Um, and see what things there are, or Google search, or paintings that you like. Um, does someone wear a um, garment and you think, oh, that's really cool. Um, I want to use that pattern, but it's used on a dress and I want to put it on a bag. Um, I mean, if you're entering it into an NF thing, that is a thing to talk to someone else about how to document that. But typically, do what makes you happy. Do what will make you more involved. Um, and if you can say this kind of pattern uh, would have existed at the same time as this kind of thing that I'm making, that's a good leap to make. Um, so a method that I used uh, with my, actually with this, I know attention where I am um, I had the, uh, that's first including a really nice picture of the embroidery um, in my Janet Arnold book. Um, the patterns of fashion, I think that was for, um, um, so low tech solution for someone who no longer has a working scanner. Was that uh, she references the um, museum? Uh, I can actually have the section accession door in here. So I went to the museum website. They had a really nice picture of the full sleeve of embroidery. So I knew what length this needed to be for my arm, never mind the size of the four. Um, and I really did want to fit so that I would have roses and cuffs. Um, and the change in size wasn't a huge one, so I decided to fuss. Um, and so I, I knew the scale that it needed to be. I just zoomed to that on my laptop and traced it on to the paper. And then the whole lot of fussing where I copied it and pasted it and copied it and then was able to fuss out an online pattern because you'll find with um, repeating patterns on garments, especially when they're counted, they're sort of consistent. The idea of something needing to be perfect is a very Victorian idea. Uh, and honestly, you should throw it out the window because if you are always worried about having perfect stitches, you will never do a third stitch because you will do your first stitch and then your second stitch will be the exact same third one and you pick it up. You'll do it again, you'll pick it up. Um, so try to aim for some kind of consistency and after a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand stitches, you will have something like consistency. Um, it's just, it's a um, but it also will come with knowing what you're doing. Um, so, and for the very cheap, don't have access to all the technology, I found that either taking a picture of what I was doing and then blowing it up on the computer, um, or uh, just using the pictures on my computer and blowing it up to trace gave me patterns that I could use. And I did the same with a jacket that I'm not going to reach for, um, where I needed, to, I had a, a decent museum 
a photo of the embroidery. And so I scaled it to what they said each motif was, um, and then traced that, traced a whole bunch of them, and then tried to find what I thought of as the type ideal of that motif in the lot. And then made my own model motif so that I could approximate this, so that I could then take that little section of the library and put out to cover an entire dock. Um, so uh, lots of work, yes, but difficult, no. Is this making sense? Gosh, Charlotte said it was weird to have her back. This is weird. Um, so you get period patterns to scale. You can look online. You can look at paintings. Um, Google image search for paintings that are period. Um, and, uh, or ask people if you're bad at research um, and say, who is a, um, an artist whose pieces that she's looking at? Who is um, a, a royal or a, a lord or lady portraits of whom she's been looking for? Ask your local librarian when you're able to, and they will be delighted to help you. Um, if you have a friend who works at or is studying at a university, they have access to fantastic collections. Ask them. Um, but also check out museums because they have um, excellent garments uh, and they have um, really fantastic collections of paintings and drawings and sketchbooks. And if you're really interested in something um, and say you want to get better angles or see what the inside of something looks like, um, ask them. Send them a request to their collections department the exception number that you're looking at and say, I have questions about this piece. Introduce yourself. Um, and very often they will answer your questions. Sometimes they might send you pictures. Um, so feel free to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, and if someone doesn't know the answer, it doesn't mean that it's dumb to ask and it doesn't mean you shouldn't stop asking. So, um, Also, just another note about designs, um, if you are borrowing a design from um, an extant piece, whether that is recreating um, a smock design or looking at a portrait and then playing like that, or finding um, a piece of embroidery somewhere or a uh, design that's not embroidery, um, and saying I want to make that. Um, some, to a certain extent, if you're using someone else's pattern, um, you can change this. You can decide to scale up or down something. You can use different colors, you can use different stitches. Um, and because sometimes you will say, I don't want to use this particular type of thread because, um, so as we uh, mentioned in the beginning, silk does wear away to become less shiny, still beautiful, less shiny. Um, if it's going to be under a lot of friction. So, do you want to use a thread that will happen if it's something under friction? Um, do you want to change the color of something because you don't want to match with the coat that you want to wear it with? Um, do you want to uh, use the cheaper gold? Change your stage eyes. Um, so that it doesn't catch on things. Uh, a general rule is if you can catch your pinky finger in it. Um, oh gosh, can anyone hear me properly? Um, if you're going to catch your finger in it, then you, uh, it, it's too busy. So, kind of figure out, you want, to have this so that it lasts a long time because you're going to put hours of work into it. Okay. Just one more time, friends. Okay.
Can we hear me? Can we hear me? Yep. More importantly, can we hear me now? Yes. Good. Oh, that's well. so much better. Oh, yay. Thank goodness. <laughs> How much of what I was saying did anyone get? <laughs> For the last 10 minutes, uh, not a lot. I got most of Someone it, but it was fuzzy. <laughs> Someone stop me. I can't hear you guys. Thank you. Um, okay, so largely I was just talking about how um, there are lots of pattern uh, references. You can um, just do a Google image search and then find out where it's from. Um, but you can also check out books, of course. Books are amazing. Um, museums. Museums are a gold mine that I didn't know was there until I was told to look. Um, and look at extant examples, but also look at portraits. Um, and crib, steel. Um, see what you like and change it so that it suits you. So for instance, while I'm at it, this is an amazing book um, that I am borrowing from a friend, but this that is on there and also on the back and also inside of it is the embroidery panel that this is based on. Now, um, I'm usually looking at my book for concepts of roughly what kinds of colors should go here or what kinds of colors should go together. Uh, but the reason that I got all of these silk threads for a relatively low price from Penzik a few years ago is because um, I was chatting with the woman and she said, yeah, no one wants the pastels um, because they want the heraldic colors and the bright colors. So they were like half price. So I just grabbed a bunch of them. Um, so I have mostly like these lovely pastels. Um, so I don't have black. I don't have a dark brown. Um, I don't have a brilliant red. I have to figure out what to do. Um, so, you know, make color choices uh, based on your, uh, what you have, what you have access to, what is appropriate. Um, if you are uh, working in a period where um, sumptuary rules matter, maybe that's a thing. But also look at um, what do you like? What's gonna suit you? What, what is going to make the hundreds of hours <laughs> worth it for you? Um, and do that and, um, you know, do what makes you happy. So uh, that's my, my thing on patterns. Um, okay. Did, okay, so do we understand the stuff where I was talking about how to transfer patterns? I yes. caught most of it, but some of it got jumbled. So, but it will depend on how okay. everybody else is doing. I got the most of that. Yeah, I got most of them. Basically, I'll do like subject headers. Um, so I talked about using the light table. I talked about using a window or a clear plastic bin lid um, as a fake light table. But also, um, you can do a fake prick and pounds, or uh, actually a, a period method with cheap tissue of just transfer your pattern on tissue, baste it to your fabric. Please don't be like me. Put it under tension, put it in a frame. Um, and then stitch through it and use tweezers to pull out anything that doesn't tear away. Um, love yourself. Do your work under tension. Um, because, so this I did not do under tension because I needed to be able to bring it to work. Um, and I didn't have a frame that I could bring to work. Um, so there were parts of it I didn't love while I was doing that. And I knew that. Um, this I didn't work under tension because, um, sorry, it looks so much like a cod piece when I hold it like that. Because uh, it's little and I was doing little stitches. Um, and most of the time that was fine. And sometimes I hated myself. Um, so love yourself. Use a frame or a hoop or um, this is a cue snap. I love these. This one is giant and difficult to carry around. I have a smaller one that is currently holding black work. Um, 
eventually they lose some of the tension grip. <laughs> yes, um, it's like a cod piece for my face. Uh, but if you use um, folded sheets of flannel or something, it helps to protect your work because of your filthy, filthy hands. Um, and it also gives you better grip. So when I am um, tensioning in a Q-snap, by the way, usually I will get, try to get good tension when I'm putting it in. And then I will uh, roll my edges out. Which then gets me a nice drum tension, which I like. Um, if you want to keep that drum tension, by the way, again, with using shorter threads, um, I'm not going to bother switching my camera just for a second, but um, we'll just do some straight stitches. So I'm pulling this through. Oh gosh, why am I like this? And rather than pulling from the needle for the rest of the way, when I tension it, I want to do it close to the thread, close to the fabric, pull through. This also gives you better longevity on your uh, thread, pull through, pull the thread close to the fabric. Um, and then you're not as likely to pull your tension loose um, from your poor frame that is trying its hardest. Um, and, and that's my notes. <laughs> okay, so hour one was just getting through all of that. Um, now questions and then stitches for anyone who didn't get to see them. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay, so. Sounds good. Please, uh, you can ask a question on voice or on chat, whatever would make it easier for you. I do have the chat visible now. Um, and uh, feel free to, if I skipped over something or if you wanted more information or you were like, hey, that was a weird thing to say, um, feel free to uh, do that. Anyone? <laughs> I don't want to touch anything because I don't know which of these is taking it. <laughs> I know, it, it seems to be working out just perfect right now, of course. Okay. Um, for um, sourcing your silks and stuff like that, do you have specific places that you like to go? Um, so again, I am a, a cheap bastard. Uh, so I don't have so much of a brand loyalty um, as who has the thing when I can afford it. Um, there, like I said, uh, Merchant Penzik, who had very reasonable prices um, and was very lovely four years ago. Um, so I can say nothing of that. Uh, and I will get back to you guys about ordering from AliExpress as to um, whether uh, they were worth it. But um, I bought from my local thread shops um, and they have had nice silks. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, I might use different silks. I also, um, for both of the things that I'm wearing that are embroidered, um, was cheap and needed a lot of thread and a particular color in silk. So I spun it. Um, so that may or may not be a useful option to people. Uh, it certainly is less color fast than buying professional stuff but it did the thing that I needed it to do. Um, so uh, there's a thing that came up in um, our research documentation class earlier. I was talking about basically if, if funds or accessibility materials is a problem um, and making it yourself would save you money and might be fun or interesting, do that. Um, if it would not be fun or interesting or would not save you money or would just cause you a whole lot of headaches, store bought it's fine. Um, so uh, yes and no, like I, I would say 
get what makes you happy. I really do like um, this particular style of um, single strand silk. Uh, there are stranded pearl silks that are also really nice. Um, uh, we have a question from Kim. Um, where's a good cheap place to get even weed cloth for a project? Apparently eight o'clock right um, now is impossible to get. Yes. Um, so if you have a local um, stitching store, I used to have an amazing one in London. Um, it has been replaced by a so-so one. Um, then check out their remnants bin because even weave is very expensive. Um, but sometimes the remnants can be really nice and fun and you didn't need a huge quantity of it um, and can be much more affordable. Uh, if you don't need even weave, um, then using uh, linen or cotton linen or rayon linen, wherever you can get it, um, works nicely. I also, someday we'll get to do this again. Uh, I haunt my local thrift shops and touch everything. Um, oh gosh, that's just a terrible habit now. Uh, and uh, I can feel like, oh, is there linen in this? So this wonderful piece was a curtain panel that just happened to be the right size for the project that I needed. Um, so feel free to reuse items if the fabric is in good condition. So is it a bed sheet that gross people slept on? Not like judgment for people who buy things thrifted, but like my stepfather is a gross person. He fixes power tools and is greasy all the time. Um, uh, so, you know, is it, is it still in good nick? Um, did it come from a shirt where the underarms wore out, but the sleeves are still in great quality? Use that. Um, but I don't really have a good source for cheap new. Um, um, another place to what? check for even weave cotton, or even weave linen, sorry, is uh, sometimes Michaels carries it uh, in a pre-done do. package. Uh, yes. And if you have a coupon, you can use it for that. The other places, of course, check uh, Amazon for similar ones. I don't have it with me right now, but I do have one of those packages. I can run down and grab it. Um, yes, I actually have a couple of the Michaels ones um, somewhere. I was just looking to see if they were in the end bins of craft stuff. Uh, actually, we ordered it, or yeah, got some from Michaels for our Shire a and booklets. Um, they have a page of eight of cloth, page of cotton, and then a page of um, even weave. Sorry, I've forgotten about the Charles Craft even weave at my Michael's. Michael's does online orderings. You can pick them up. Um, so uh, this stuff is pretty decent. Um, I just tend to forget about it because it's a little bit wider. It's a, a 28 count, I think which is a little bit more spacing than I want for a lot of projects. Um, I'm used to using tighter weave fabrics. Amelia, can I ask mm -hmm. what may be kind of dumb question? Because uh, I'm questions. new to this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of the, I'm working on some black work for a shirt. Uh, so I want to do a collar and cuffs and probably just leave it at that. Um, I'm seeing two kinds of black work, or at least to my eye, they look like two kinds of black work. <laughs> yes, you uh, are. One that's like uh, Aida cloth, and the other one, which is much more rounded forms. Um, so it, it's been uh, traced on and then stitched over. Um, if I chose to do my black work with, uh, say, I eat a cloth, then my linen, and then probably the fusible interface getting stuck on the back of that. Um, can you tear regular I eat a cloth out of the picture when you're finished with it? Mm. Eh. Um, I would say no to that. Because if okay. you're stitching, stitching directly to the Aida, it's going to get kind of trapped, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you could pull threads away individually, but 
then your your stitches would have more loop and depth to them than you wanted. Um, okay. So if you're so, doing a counted, uh, this actually welcome to my TED talk about the difference between black work and black work. Um, there's counted black work, uh, which is geometric. Yeah. Right. Um, and that is usually done so that it's mostly two sided um, with a uh, whole vine stitch or can also be done with um, back stitch. Um, and is um, the more geometric, although when it gets to England, man, do we have fun doing um, cute little like peas and roses and like patterns. That's the more mm -hmm. stuff. Then there is what is also black work that is tracery, um, which actually also this is technically black work. This red work is tracery. Yeah. Um, and uh, that is, you're gonna have to transfer your pattern on or stitch through something. Um, it's not counted, so you wouldn't be working through a counted fabric for it. Now, um, if, I'm, if I'm doing that, uh, another newbie stupid question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know Holbein stitch, but I can look it up. Um, are things like chain stitch okay? Or are you better to do like uh, a back stitch uh, to uh, to make it uh, uh, a continuous one line of stuff? Red. So this is a stem stitch, um, and a chain stitch would also work if you did it tiny. Okay. Oh, thank you for uh, doing that. Um, I keep forgetting, not everyone's going to see it properly. Uh, oh, good. I'll leave it on this for you. It beautiful, by the way. For. There we are. Um, I might have you switch me over again so that I can demonstrate a whole bind stitch. Um, okay. So this is all done in stem stitch and outline. Technically, they're different, but they're actually the same. Um, okay. And so, yes, you can absolutely, if you're doing the tracery style, do things that aren't... Um, uh, back stitch or double running. It has, see if I can get the right angle on this. Um, you can see how there's dimension to it, right? Yeah. It sits up off the surface. Um, and uh, that was what I wanted. It's also a little annoying when you're stitching because your threads want to angle one way or the other. And you don't want them to do that. Um, chain stitch won't do that. Chain stitch will love you a lot better. Um, so Yes, if you're doing tracery, absolutely. Um, if you're doing the, and this is the annoying part because they're both black work, right? Yeah. So, um, apologies. Um, whereas if you're doing, okay, we're just gonna turn my video back on. Start video, do the thing. Okay, um, excellent. Nature's pocket. Um, so let's get through. So these were done in Holbein or double running. Um, and I will go over that in just a second. Um, okay. I'm just going to thread a needle first. And so the trick here is that it is following, you know, step by step. Sometimes we do diagonals. Um, and then other than where I tie in my ends, it's mostly the same on the other side, and you're going to see why. So, okay. um, sorry, uh, I'm going to grab thread. Oh, as an aside, if you are using less precious thread than silk or stranded thread, like um, DMC cotton, I have no problem with DMC cotton, especially if you're a beginner or don't know if you love this yet. Um, mm. So, you know, again, do what makes you happy. So I cut these to a length that is, oh gosh, how do I show multiple things? Um, I cut these to a length that works arms. for me. Yeah. Yes. And then I uh, slipped them in here. The, when there were more of them, they were braided together. I'm going to pull out a single strand. 
if I were stitching with two, I would pull out two single strands and then put them together. And you notice how that wasn't a huge fight um, to, you know, be pulling and untangling everything. Um, so that was a, another trick that was taught to me when I joined my Embroiderers Guild and it changed my life because it made everything so much easier. So, um, here we go. Yay, not being able to see. Um, you can use knots if you choose to. I think I'm not going to here. I'll just do a little stitch to catch it. Um, okay, eh, that didn't do it. You know what, we're gonna do a knot. Um, once again, Victorian ideas of the back needs to be perfect. Throw them away. They are of no use to you. Um, okay, that may or may not catch, but I'm going to do my, my best. Okay. That's nice to hear. I, I'd always heard your, the back of your work needs to be perfect. Nope. I've nope. never done um, it. Definitely so not. The back of your work needs to make you happy, right? Um, and so if it is going to be a flat item, the back of your work needs to not be all bunchy. Um, so this, I wanted to make sure that any red threads on the back didn't show mm -hmm. and that there weren't bunchy areas. Um, so, you know, you do what makes you happy, but especially if you're stitching through something thick and no one's going to see the back and you're going to line it, pff, like, don't waste your thread on the back, but yeah, do what yeah, you like. So long, as, so long as I'm not lining it with duct tape, you know. <laughs> Exactly. I'm just going to show, okay. uh, Tina has something to show us. So one moment. Yes. There is Tina. Yes. of my counted black work. And no, Ooh. it's not tidy at all. And I don't care because the front is very pretty. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Now, also, just so you know, this is not on an even weave. I'm doing it over two threads one way and three threads the other to get the square. Yeah. Because I wanted to do it on the linen I had. And because everything yes. was close. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I, quick story, when I learned white work a few years ago, um, I did my sample piece on a uh, piece of um, linen rayon, I think, that I had. Um, again, wanted to use the fabric, liked it. Uh, and it wasn't until I finished the square and saw that it wasn't square that I realized that was not an even weave. So I measured it, counted the threads, and then, yeah, I did a similar thing of, you know, five stitches one way with seven stitches the other. And just every however many groupings, I added another thread. Now, I'd have another so, one where I actually worked out better for me. This one is a two by two. But oh, wow. It's out of whack. So I ended up with a black work TARDIS that actually ended up taller the way I wanted it to. Yeah. <laughs> Math. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so um, would you please uh, spotlight the other one, the mobile? Oh, oh, hold on, sorry. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so we have, um, if we're familiar with running stitch, that'd be great. Let's just demonstrate. So we're going to do, uh, notice how I don't immediately know where I need to come up um, from the back. That's fine. I will find it if I have to poke around to do it. Um, and don't ever think that you have to get it perfect the right time. Stab around a whole bunch, just don't stab yourself. Um, when I teach embroidery and sewing, I teach a few basic rules. Don't sew it to yourself. That includes going through your fingers. Um, don't sew it to your clothing. Don't sew it to itself in ways it wasn't supposed to be and don't sew it um, to the surroundings like a tablecloth. All of these things come from having done them myself. Um, Seamus, who is our herald in Trinovantia Nova, I should have introduced myself. Hi, I'm Amelia. I'm from the Shire of Trinovantia Nova in Aldemir. Um, uh, he managed to stitch through his beard. So we add from that, um, don't stitch into your beard or hair. Also, don't stitch that. into the cat. <laughs> no. um, 
I've just been skipping ahead. Mm -hmm. Running stitch can go in multiple directions. Um, I'm just doing one direction to start. And in fact, why don't we just take a turn here? Yeah, um, don't stitch it to the cat. Words to live by. Yes. Uh, I mostly have done things like spinning or knitting and catching the cat fur because she what wanted to What sort of fabric are you sewing into? That looks like Aida cloth to me. This is indeed Aida cloth. Okay, um, Aida cloth. Okay. Yes. Oh, both pronunciations are correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's just a regional thing. Uh, so, um, you can also follow diagonals, but I think you're kind of getting the grasp yeah. of move in one direction, go over under. Um, running stitch is also a good sewing stitch, um, wherein you would usually do it by hooking and um, sewing, right? In and out yeah. at the same time. Um, but I, I do not recommend that for embroidery. Don't learn my bad habits. So uh, we just did running stitch. Now let's do double running stitch, which is also called Holbein because oh. it is used um, in the garments that are shown in Holbein's works. Okay, um, so I get the idea. Yeah. And so a trick that I learned when you're doing larger pieces in um, black work. Um, so let me just get to my little corner here, maybe. Um, so typically you're going to be following along a line and it's a little bit of following a maze. So cool, I've just turned a corner. And now I'm gonna flip my page over so I can go to where I decided to um, pattern out a, a cuff that is worn by Jane Seymour, maybe? One yep. of the Janes, yep. Um, yeah. And it was late at night and I thought, oh, I like that, I wanna pattern it out. Uh, and then of course realized as I was looking to find out what painting is this from? That someone else had already patterned it, but they had patterned the cuff part wrong. So I'm glad I did it myself. Um, so this is uh, continuous lines. Um, and so how I do is I'm going to start here and go up. And um, I think I might've done there and back. And when you get to here, you go there and back and you go around yeah. and you go around and you go around basically, um, until you get around. Now, you can either go back here and follow all the way around and then scooch across, or um, let's say you just keep going and say, I'll pick that up later. When I run out of thread, I don't have to continue on the pattern. I can pick up my thread back here and fill in all of those spaces. Because otherwise, I go a little squirrely trying to um, trying to uh, remember, was I supposed to do one over here or was I supposed to do one up? But if I start filling it in as I go, um, then I'm way less likely to get distracted um, and do it wrong. Hmm. Does that make sense? Um, yes, well, <laughs> it was <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> um, but also this was an important lesson because just because someone has already made a pattern doesn't mean that it's not worth your verifying or your practice if you want to try, right? Um, yes, that can be um, So it's, it's worth it to you to, to say, hey, is this what I want to do? Um, any questions? Next? Someone asked a no. question in the chat and then we got distracted. Um, let me see. Yes, it does involve learning, or learning involves doing all the mistakes. Um, mm. My grandfather used to have a, an expression that was, um, and what lesson do we learn from the warthog? Don't be a warthog, which I largely understood for, don't make my mistakes when I'm telling you not to make them. Um, so I, yes. Um, Uh, uh, the book I mentioned earlier, by the way, was um, Elizabethan Embroidery, that one? Yes. Uh, I can see if I can find the link on Amazon for people. Yes, um, it's also on Book Depository. Here it is. It's Elizabethan Stitches by Jackie Carey, A Guide to Historic English Needlework.
um, the really nice thing about this is not only does it have a number of useful stitches, it is a bit pricey, but it's not overly pricey, if I recall. Mind you, I was going to buy a copy of Patterns of Fashion 4 last night because it was $50 plus shipping, and then it, this morning, jumped up to $110 plus shipping, and I said, no. No. So, what was where, last, where were you getting Jackie? it from? Um, Amazon, because everyone else was more expensive. Um, check with the, the Needlework School because they're publishing them themselves. Um, uh, I, I was told that and given a yeah. link to that and no, it was just a list of their publications, not saying that they were re-releasing them. And they, they are. released yeah. Patterns of Fashion 5. Yeah. Um, I would they, really appreciate a link if you can get one. I'll see if I can find it. I know they're in the process of all of the uh, publication contracts are expired. <laughs> Okay. So they're taking them back over again. So it may be a little while before they come back in, but yeah. That would be amazing. Um, I, I have Patterns of Fashion 5, which I bought from them, but... Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so the, it, it may take a few months, moment, but it was coming. just a list. Yes. Well, um, I, I picked I up a book on Black... I picked up a book on Black Work, but I really didn't like the thing. Um, it was one of these Kindle books. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, win some, lose some. At least it told me what sort of needles to try and buy. Um, yeah. Not a bad yeah. reason. Not that Amazon is delivering them. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad resource um, is the uh, the historical school of embroidery. There's a cup. There's one out in the UK. The Royal yes. School of Needlework, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. And they have some. Um, good uh, I have a copy and um, I'm really upset because I can't find it uh, in my mess of an apartment. Um, shock, I know. Uh, that is a, a really good um, stitch set, uh, book. And I'm supposed to teach a beginning stitches class in the fall and I can't find my stitch book. Um, and I'm, I will post a link to, to that because I just can't remember the name of it. It's a really good volume. Um, but no volume has all the stitches in it. Uh, so if you're looking at even modern embroidery, um, check out a cruel embroidery book. Um, it will have a bunch of stitches that you may not get in another embroidery book, like stem stitch and split stitch. Um, mm -hmm. and some of most stitches or most stitch books will look at chain stitch, but they might not consider reverse chain which I'm now very comfortable with chain stitch, but I wasn't for a while and reverse chain made me not hate it anymore. Um, and uh, reverse chain is basically, I have a, a video about it, but um, instead of, of going up and down and then coming up through the loop you left, um, you have made a stitch. Now you're gonna come up, hook around that previous stitch and go down. So if you're the kind of person who makes beautiful stitches, one, each in the last, right? And, and you always go this through, the, through the same loop. Um, and it's like um, lace work. It's so beautiful and precise. And then something distracts you and you didn't catch it properly and you pull it out. Yeah. Um, and then you cry. Uh, reverse chain might be your friend because you can't pull it out uh, with that same kind of ease. So. Can I ask a Another crazy question. The whole vine stitch you were doing, uh, mm -hmm. you were using two, uh, two ply of thread uh, with um, it? I was using one strand of uh, the DMC cotton, which is a two ply, I think. One strand. I go blind. <laughs> <laughs> I have very good vision for now. I use a magnifying glass. I have a lighted yes. uh, magnifier. Because uh, I do or new way, and it literally is often the size of uh, two and a half inches wide. So mm -hmm. uh, a lighted magn magnifying glass is a very reasonable friend. <laughs> Sometimes I borrow what I refer to as Orla's eyes um, because she is uh, a jeweler and goldsmith. She has a headset um, that is a magnifier, um, and I borrowed it to do some... Uh, engraving work, and then um, we'll sometimes borrow it if I have to do something stupidly tiny, like when I decided to do um, 
interlaced insertion stitch. Can I grab it? Oh, I know it's over there. Interlaced insertion stitch on something a hole the size of my pinky fingernail. Like a sane person does. Um, so that requires a lot of light and magnification or pulling it up to my eyes. Um, so yes, don't be afraid to use a magnifier and lots of light. Um, I don't feel like getting up to get it. Uh, Ot lights are expensive, but there are other versions of it that are less expensive and will still work. Um, so again, my, my local um, embroidery shop that used to live in London, um, they had a supply of them for a little while and we just ordered them for like $30, uh, plugs in to USB or has um, a wall adapter um, and you just tap it. Uh, I think it might also have batteries, but I don't ever use them um, to get LED lighting. Um, mm. And it does the trick. Um, I, um, Amelia, I just posted the link from the uh, School of Historical Dress, their announcement about the Janet Arnold books. Oh, thank you. So. I'm just going <laughs> to grab it and pull it over. It. Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Because I, yeah, I was given a link before and they're like, oh yeah, they're doing that. And it was just a link to their publications and I was very sad. Um, yeah, this is the video. It's like a list of things so. you can't buy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this beautiful thing. You can't have it. Which one are you looking for? Uh, are you looking four. for one in number four? I think I have number four. I know people who do. My local library has it. But you can't get it. <laughs> Not right now, anyway. <laughs> Not right now. Uh, eventually, I might be able to. We'll see. Um, but at least for the moment, I have other things. Um, who's next? Questions? Another, I just, another book that I've found that's useful for a lot of stuff, surprisingly enough, is Reader's Digest. Mm. Complete Guide to Needlework. Really? Yeah, watch The Goodwill. Mm. Yes. I've picked up a lot of, uh, like, cool workbooks and things that were really popular in the 70s when there was a bit of a revival of needle, needlework. That's when and, this was Yeah, you can get some real goodies in there. Yes. Um, 1979. <laughs> your local Goodwill and Value Village, um, check out not just their fabric in the materials um, and draperies, also um, like bed sheets and stuff if you're looking for fabrics, um, but also they sometimes have um, threads and notions and things. Basically, Roll someone has died, uh, but you know, you may as well benefit. <laughs> I picked up a bag last year that was full of six cent floss because that's how old it was. It's actually made in France. Like, it's not the cheap stuff out of Mexico. Yeah. Um, nice. and awesome book. No, no, if you can see it. Or hold on, hold on. I'm gonna make you. I'll spotlight you just a second. Thump work, gold work, surface embroidery, the beetle collection. Yeah. Fun. So it's an entire book on doing bugs. So there's 3D yeah. bugs, there's all sorts of things, um, and there's even a lovely Tudor rose in there. Mm. Nice. <laughs> and hey, I was just going to say, we all have our stashes, right? Just a little. Just a little, you know, <laughs> not much, but a little bit. Enough to keep us busy uh, for the uh, pandemic that lasts a decade. Anyway, uh, but I think everybody, you know, uh, if I'm heading on to greener pastures or whatever, I want my stash to go to somebody that would enjoy it and use it and go, oh, wow, look what I got. This is one of my favorite ones that I will at some point do. Hold on. 3D pomegranate. Nice. Oh, that's lovely. 3D pomegranates. It's got a beetle in it. It's got all sorts of things. So one of these days, I'll snail. Yeah. So, lucky so me, for, I go to back to work on for that, would you use like French knots for the seeds in the pomegranates? 
Um, let me see. What have they got? They actually used beads because this one is a stump oh. workbook. Okay. So with pomegranates come out over the beads. Ooh. Is it one of these days? What exactly so, is stump work? Three dimensional. Cool. <laughs> so there's a little bit of wire work in there and all sorts of things. Makes it a little more wow. work. But they're fun. Yeah. Do you know of like any examples or any usages of uh, surface embroidery like earlier, let's say like 10th century? Um, I will happily hand this over because my knowledge of early period is lacking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I love all the examples and like, like the tutors have all the fun. I love the tutors. But <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of doing like more of like the early stuff. And I'm like, why am I doing this when I love embroidery so much? <laughs> if you look at um, Viking Age emb embroidery on Pinterest or on... Yeah, um, it's very different, but... Yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff done with herringbone stitches. Mm -hmm. um, there's... Um, a lot of uh, sort of Celtic knot uh, stuff. I'm not sure exactly how it's done, but, um, and I, I don't know the um, grave finds. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I mean, have to be there's careful. even less iconography. Bumpy herringbone. Yeah. But um, I think what you're running into. Lumpy. Well, mine's well, lumpy. <laughs> herringbone's not lumpy. My herringbone is lumpy. Practice more. <laughs> practice Just more. Practice. You'll find um, there's a lot more um, images and manuals and all of that kind of stuff in the 16th century. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't have the same kind of, they didn't document the same way earlier in the periods. And so that's why you're finding less and less examples. And if you're looking at the artwork of the period, um, it's very, very uh, specific to ecclesi ecclesiastical stuff. So yeah. church vestments um, and less about the ornamentation or you don't see as much example of the ornamentation. So if you're really into surface embroidery to the Elizabethan, you'll just need a set of Elizabethan clothes. That's all. That's fair. Um, just do, do some more for fun. Yeah. I also <laughs> did things for other people. I also yes, did a lot of work for um, uh, Spain 1260 costume, Cantigas of Santa Maria. And um, there was, they did embroidery. Um, they also sewed uh, a blank load of pearls everywhere. So I got so tired of sewing pearls onto the damn thing. Um, but, <laughs> you know, like, hey, you do what you gotta do, right? Um, so, yeah, there's stuff about medieval embroidery and, and Viking embroidery. Yeah, you just have to dig a bit more. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just not as prevalent as like Tudor and 16th century, where they were like all about it. The yeah. other thing to keep in mind, um, so as I'm talking about surface embroidery, is we haven't talked about the price of materials in period as opposed to presently. Um, but, you know, you think thread is expensive now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was even more so before machinery. Exactly. Um, mm. So the nice thing about surface embroidery is um, this is the back of my work. Notice how messy it is in places. Notice mm. how there were definitely spots where uh, it, I tangled and didn't pay attention. Every once in a while, look at the back of your work um, to see if, oh, where's a good spot? Something like that has happened. Or closer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right? Ah, Where, that happens uh, to me. <laughs> there was a thread that got caught on the back and I didn't notice. Um, so every once in a while, have a look at the back of your work. But you don't need to be flipping it over all the time. Use your hands um, on the back of your work to feel. Does this feel smooth? Does it feel tight? Do I feel like something's gone very, very wrong? Um, but... Uh, the nice thing is, so I'm not using a whole lot on the back. It's all going on the front. So the um, limited but should be fine amount of silk that I have um, all goes on the front of this. 
and I'm getting the most out of it. So it makes sense that um, any decorative embroidery would um, follow the same kind of protocols. Things like herringbone um, are typically functional embroidery. It's a tailoring stitch as well as an embroidery stitch. Um, so it's really good for decorating hems or decorating seams because it's going to strengthen them. Uh, exactly. Brief aside, welcome to my TED talk. Uh, typically extra stitching and embroidery is done for um, uh, decoration and strengthening. So it can repair, it can strengthen, it can provide stability or stiffness. So counted work that's done is in a tent stitch looks a lot like half of a cross stitch a modern cross stitch but if you look at the back there's a whole ton of thread on the back and it's because the purpose was to stiffen the fabric mm -hmm. um so uh if if you wanted to use less thread on the back because you want all the pretty to be on the, the top um use surface embroidery and if you want to have more function to the embroidery um, then you need to have more moderation between what's on top and what's on the bottom. And that's where something like a herringbone or running stitch um, can be very useful. I'm so when you're filling in those uh, flowers and leaves with the, um, I'm guessing you're not going like through the fabric and then coming up. So are you going over and then just taking one stitch and then going back in the opposite direction? Yeah, um, so, that's the corded detached buttonhole. Uh, I'm doing this in chain stitch. I'm just looking, is there anywhere that I can snag on the attached buttonhole? Yes. I just got to find my green and we are going to... Um, Amelia, while well, you're doing that, I'm very um, thread banger school, so I'm not very <laughs> good at anything. But this is the first, um, let's see, where, where's the camera? Um, yeah. Uh, this is my first attempt at a Viking Age uh, tunic. Uh, I love it! And uh, so it's got herringbone on it. Uh, it uh, has a, I think it was a double whip stitch. I used herringbone uh, to reinforce the seams. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of work. Uh, I think one of the big lessons I learned from this is if you're going to put a lot of work into it, use better cloth than this, okay? Yes. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, it was a learning thing. I think I was sick during it or something, so I just kept stitching. Um, but I just thought I'd bring that out while you were setting up. Yes, thank you. I love seeing what people do um, because embroidery is something that really excites me and that I really enjoy. And so I love seeing when other people are also doing this thing that I love. Um, and I especially love seeing what people do when they're starting out, right? Like what, did, what, what made you want to try embroidery and what were your triumphs and what did you have trouble with? And, you know, yeah, learning that experience. It's like anyone who knits starts with acrylic and then stops using acrylic um, unless they're knitting for babies because it's, if you're putting hundreds of hours into something, use something that brings you joy. And so eventually, yeah, we all become fiber snobs um, because, I mean, if you're going to put the time in, use or, the fabric that brings you joy. Or become okay. a just I'm just going to get something more. Yes. Okay. Um, I did uh, find my package of even weave. If I'll show everybody if they want to see it there. Yes, do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. So often the craft stores, I think I picked up this one probably at, at Joanne's in the States, but often you can just find packages of Belgian linen, which is fantastic. This is 32 counts, so it's quite tiny, but uh, there's different counts out there, of course. Um, I think Michael's might sell it in the tube format um from charles craft but yeah same kind of business there we go okay i, I do have my most home project if people would like to see it okay hold on i'll, I'll yes. spotlight you second 
so we have a Venetian flag fan here. Oh, hold on, hold on. There we go. There we go. Ooh. Very lovely. Wow. Lovely. So that is, that That's is done fun. in Japan gold and, um, sorry, Japan thread. And these are a flat silk. Wow. Spectacular. This is a Ornway brick stitch. These are laid and couched. These are long arm cross stitch. And this is the uh, braided plate stitch. Oh, yes. Very Ornway. nice. Must have a wonderful weight to it as well. It does. I haven't done the back yet, but the back will be the same. Oh, very nice. I Are just you brought ready, out Amelia? my Tantiga. I'm outfit. ready. This All is right. just. Oh, do you want to hold on a second, John? Sure. Let Amelia. Absolutely. Okay, so this was the corded detached buttonhole. It's not at the angle that I want it to be at, but we're going to do what we can. Um, again, only so much we can do with Nature Shelf. Um, so the cording is this. Come here. Come on, focus on my hand. There we are. This long thread here, um, I cannot get it to focus better. Uh, and then I have come up just on the other side of it here. And I have my previous row of buttonhole. Sometimes I will do this into a chain stitch. Um, the reason, by the way, that I had uh, this space left empty is because I got bored with it as soon as I finished a thread. And just like you were saying, John, you got tired of stitching on pearls. Yeah. Feel free to just move around a space so long as you're not going to interfere with the other work um, and do whatever is going to keep you working on it rather than whatever is going to make you unhappy. So I will, apologies for the lack of focus. Um, I'm going to go into my first buttonhole and hook and then into the second buttonhole. So basically I'm going under the first thread, under my cording thread, over my long tail, and then pull not too tight. Um, and other than going across the work one way with the cording and the other way uh, as I'm stitching back, um, I don't, like when I anchor at either end, um, I don't uh, go through the fabric. So all of this is happening um, on the front. Does that make sense? So like you've got yeah. a white cord going across, it's anchored into chain stitches on the outline? Oh, um, actually it is the same thread. So as soon as I get to the other end of this, I can show the full length of it. Okay. Um, so it just looks, looks white because of the reflection, cause silk. Um, but yes, I, I have a cord thread going across. Now some of those, if you get a chance to look at the Elizabethan stitches, the cute little pea pods are done in corded detached buttonhole, but the cording thread is metallic. Um, so it really shines. Now Sorry, why is it called away. buttonhole? Um, so buttonhole and blanket stitch are the same stitch. Okay, um, yeah. called so because they are used respectively uh, to um, edge the holes of button or for buttonholes and yeah. to edge blankets. Um, a blanket stitch is big and there's lots of space and a buttonhole is smaller and sometimes knotted. Okay. Um, I thought there was also the difference of the direction that you went so that there was the twist in the buttonhole and no twist in the blanket. Uh, that would, you can do it from either direction. Um, it changes the look of the angle of the stitches a little bit, sort of like using an S and Z twist in weaving will change the look of the work under light. Um, you may or may not care about that feeling the back of my work. Did I leave anything? Okay. Um, it's, uh, it, don't want to get into like twisted buttonhole and knotted buttonhole, but there are a whole lot of 
extra ways to treat it. There's a very basic kind of thing. Sorry, back to the back to the boob window. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like to keep my classes classy. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna find a spot. Thing I have noticed is if I um, you have to come up a few threads away, uh, like on your fabric, or otherwise it's just going to tear out. So if I angle my anchoring stitch a little bit closer on one side, um, then my stitching will end up more or less even. Oh gosh. How to focus with my bust. Um, and still be able to see. So. I go across, I make sure that that's relatively even. Some people might like to use a laying tool here. I can't find my laying tool to show you, but it's, um, it's basically like a long claw. Uh, otherwise people can just use a nail or use a pen cap or something to make sure that your threads are lying flat. Um, I usually don't bother, but it's nice. So. Um, your opposite thumb is a great friend. Uh, if you are left-handed, do this with your left hand. Are there any lefties in the class? Okay. Doesn't Sinister sound monsters. Like it. <laughs> um, um, just so I can, know I can demonstrate left-handed. Um, I've also put time? the no, no. Uh, we're the last class of the day, so we're allowed to go on mm -hmm. longer. Oh, there's one. Whoever admin is, <laughs> they are a lefty. Um, I've uh, posted the Eldemir uh, Embroiderers Facebook group. So mm -hmm. if you are not part of that, please go ahead and join. You can reach any of us who are there. Okay. So, sorry, as I readjust, um, I'm not quite as skilled with my left hand, but... principle is the same. So this is my always my pet peeve whenever anyone's like, oh, I could never learn such and such because I'm left handed and no one would teach me. And I'm like, okay, whoever failed to teach you is garbage because they didn't try. <laughs> um, like, there's not being able to and that's fine. But Try sitting opposite the person. Try using your left hand because they've had to use their non-dominant hand their entire life. So, you know. So yes, what, the name of this stitch is the, the double detached or the double corded? This wow. is a corded detached buttonhole. Corded detached? There's no button. double. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, uh, double usually means that I'd be stitching twice into the same loop. Um, okay. So thinking of another. Or, yeah. So the cording, corded. So you can also do a, a non-corded detached buttonhole. It tends to arc more. See how I've got. Okay. See, I've got like a little bit of thread happening there. Uh -huh. um, that's just a manage your thread, pay attention to it, love it, and fix it. Um, how long the cording has it thread you... keeps it tidy. Sorry? So how long do, has it taken you to do all of this? Like this particular work? Uh, two weeks, maybe three. Wow. So it's consistent um, work though. I, so like, I don't work all day, but yes. So I, it's what I do most of the time. because I don't know much about this. Is that actually like little pocket, the green part, like not adhered directly to the, uh, yep. Good question. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Um, and so it will be stitched down. As I get to the end, I'm gonna stitch more into those chain stitches around it. At the yeah. end, I stitch in, or sometimes, actually, okay, let's look at this really filthy looking pomegranate. Yes, I do them deliberately like this. Um, <laughs> so see how there's kind of a lip around the labial parts of it? Um, 
And that is because I am stitching over the edge of the chain stitch. So I'm catching my edges um, when I do that. Now here's the difference. This is all corded, detached buttonhole. Let me try to get close. And this is not, this is just detached buttonhole. It's a little less sturdy, but it's able to take a curve better. Okay. So. Looks like it has a nice texture to it, the stitches. Mm -hmm. It's better than just like a flat stitch. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that I've used in here? I don't think so. Oh, hang on. Mm. Well, it also, it, I get a little bit of texture at the edges. So what I do here is my outline goes around here and then down to the bottom. Um, and then I get some texture in between stitches and then I follow it. Um, and then as well, uh, when I get to the bottom, because I didn't want to make that lip because the lighter area needs to go on top. Um, as I'm doing my chain stitches, then I do go through the fabric, or not my chain stitches, my, uh, my buttonhole, and then I come back up and catch it like it was a non-detached buttonhole um, so that it catches in those little edges. Uh, while I'm here, one more thing. I can just find... Oh, sorry. I forgot what it's called, but I was looking at, and it was older tapestries. Um, I want to see the <laughs> carry on. <laughs> the same thing, that's why I'm laughing. She brought me a roll of yarn while I was sleeping. Um, yes, um, she likes to do that for some reason. I need yarn while I'm sleeping, but um, where they did like short satin stitches and then like, but th to conserve um, thread, like you were saying, they didn't like stitch underneath, they would like pick up to like very right next to the thread and go back. Yes, that is, as and far as I'm concerned, that's the correct way to do it. Right, and actually I started doing that, which is my normal like modern embroidery. I'm like, this saves so much thread. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they couched over that yeah. to like make it sturdy and to stay on the fabric longer. Yeah. But it was like this three yes. part like stitching like method to basically like keep these um, like works of art like lasting like much like so much longer. Like you did it like in sections and you went like all the same way and then like you couched over it. And I like it was a really interesting way to like keep these tapestries. And probably why they lasted so long is because that thread was on there. Oh yeah, it's not going anywhere. No, it's um, not going anywhere. <laughs> and. And if you messed up, you thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing up that particular um, satin stitch. I want to see. All right, I have my materials for. Uh, it's gone forever. Um, uh, the class that I will be teaching, I had done a sample for the satin stitch. And yes, so when I'm doing satin stitch like that, I will go up um, and then over a thread or two, usually two at least two. Uh, and then down and then over and then up and over. So you're kind of ladder stitching, right? And then you get to the end and you go back and you fill. And if you have to, you'll do it again. Um, but typically you won't. Uh, the other thing you can do with, that's handy with this is you can start in the center. So if you're ever like, oh crap, I need to know where that center line is, um, then start in the center and go out and then backfill and go out to the other side and backfill. Um, so I love doing satin stitch like that, where I always hated it because it's so wasteful. Yeah, it saves a lot um, of blood that way. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned so that. We, yeah. One last time on um, the mobile cam, please. Oh, perfect. Um, okay, so uh, I just wanted to show off in situ the ones that I haven't done yet. No, I suppose I have a little of it there. Um, this is the uh, spider web rose. We're just going to focus on here. Sorry, am I okay? No, nope. it's just my phone that's being weird. Um, it's a little bit more dimensional and textural here um, because I managed to pack more thread into it. Um, and you can do it flat and disc like as well. Uh, and that's basically you make four arms. Um, again, video about this. Um, and then the fifth one goes into the center and starts weaving. It's very quick and easy, I promise. Sure. Um, chain stitch. 
so here's, I have a point about this. Um, so my little tiny chain stitches on top of my leaves, I realized as I was finishing them that I wouldn't be able to see the lines that I had drawn having already done the stitching. Brainwave had I. And I drew them more heavy, heavily in my um, uh, washable marker. I could also use a pen or a pencil at this point so that I will know where to go so that basically if I have to look on the backside to see where I'm supposed to be at, then I can still stitch those. Um, and then this is the uh, double ladder. Um, this one is a little bit more tricky, but I promise um, it does get better with practice. So like my, my attention here got a little weird and then I just had to fix it. Um, and then the nice thing is that uh, any problems in tension get hidden by the fact that no one is going to have their nose in this because that would be rude. Um, the, the double ladder, that's not couch thread, is it? It is not. So um, let me grab my uh, sample piece. There it is. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to unthread everything so that. Oh, can see and it. by the way, that colored uh, coif that you were showing is gorgeous. Thank you so much. I'm glad that it survived the incident that means I no longer have a favorite child. <laughs> um, I'm not going to ask about that. <laughs> she was expressing her displeasure uh, yeah. by getting up onto the table where she's not even allowed in the first place and peeing on my coif. Oh, no. <laughs> So oh, that's hurtful. <laughs> and she also peed on my garters like a month before I presented them. Um, so uh, Good luck. he's a lucky creature. Uh, Orla there, calls there, her mittens. There is a product at PetSmart called uh, Nature's Nature's Miracle. Uh, Nature's, Nature's yeah. Miracle. Yeah. yeah, it takes out urine. Pet. It, well, it it takes out no. a lot of it. It's good for things you can't wash. Um, here's, as an aside, uh, so vinegar, like putting it in a, a vinegar rinse with baking soda, sounds yeah. ridiculous because why would you combine those? But soaking it in water with vinegar and baking soda will take out most things. It will dye something where the, the dye is going to run. Um, but also uh, if you can get um, charcoal, activated charcoal, uh, things that you would put, say, in your shoes because your feet are stinky. Um, you can put it in a container with that and it will take out a lot of the stench. So she's lucky I was able to get that out or look at her mittens because that's what she could have been. Um, uh, so the double ladder here, um, I did it in a pearl cotton um, and I recommend, so if you haven't had a chance to watch them already, give a no. uh, look to the videos. Um, try them in a uh, cotton before you try them in um, a fancy thread. Uh, but the double ladder, which again, I promise is easier than it looks. Um, it just starts weird. Uh, you need something heftier. So a pearl cotton um, or using all six strands of uh, DMC thread or a, a metallic thread that has a little bit of heft will do. But basically, where's my start? This is my start. Um, I'm just gonna follow along to where I've already been. So I came up and, or no, I came up over here and I did a little arc and I let it have some uh, give, came up and tacked it down. And then I came up over here and I did a really big circle. So I went under my threads, big loop around under my threads and tacked it down. I know you can't see that based on the threads, but just trust me. Um, and then, so those first two stitches are your base. After that, you're gonna start doing it and it will just come easily. So after that, we come down here, we're gonna come up over across from where we were. 
So um, I'm now here. And then I'm gonna go down, crossing two threads under, sorry, under my threads. No, under these threads. Um, up and around over two threads under the little X and up. And so I had just come up on these little, this little spot. So I'm gonna go down and tack directly opposite. So in the video, you'll get to see that um, as I'm stitching it rather than here's where I've already stitched. Also the video quality is a little bit better because it's not going over Zoom. Um, Can so I ask where we'll be... the videos are? Um, so they are on YouTube. Um, we had a link to the, the handout page of Fool. Okay, I didn't um, quite get the handout page of Fool. Do the videos have any particular title? Uh, yes. Um, Here, I'll send you the link, John, so through the chat. So you can just click on there. You. She's posted the YouTube links right there. So I'll, thank you. Uh, pull that up and send it along. Thank you also, very much. Uh, highly recommend to everyone that you go to the Fool page, go to the handouts. Um, and steal the handouts for the page for the classes you didn't get to go to, because uh, those teachers made excellent will be handouts. Yeah, and the video right. should be up by the end, probably Monday or Tuesday, of all the classes, Wonderful. so you can take those. Nice. As well. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, back to this stitch. What would that be used for? Is that a border or for a cuff? So this is used for. Oh gosh, where do I put things? I need these pink ties because they show me where I've been. Um, this is the double ladder. So it's these uh, heavier lines, very decorative, but it can also okay. be used. I originally had planned on covering the seam with it. Um, and I didn't in this, but that's an option. There are some jackets that use, if not this stitch, a variation. There are lots of different types of these. Um, they have them in that really excellent Elizabethan stitches book. Um, and, uh, so they would be used to cover seams. So not so much to disguise your th seam as to, um, make it pretty, but also to strengthen it because, um, that's an extra level of thread and stitching so that you're not going to pull too hard and pop the stitches, right? Um, especially with the way that tailoring construction works in later period where um, seams were stitched on the outer garment and then the lining was stitched in rather than having two garments that you put back to back. Um, so it is, uh, it's a uh, five after five. So I'm yes. not sure if other people have other things they need to be doing. Um, I'm gonna you are to officially no go. longer my prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> 10 p.m. over here, so I'm going to say goodbye. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. Have a wonderful night, Carly. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, amazing class. Good night Thanks. and pleasant dreams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm still available if there's anyone who wants to stick around and ask questions for a couple minutes. Um, thank you so much for people who came even though there were some technical issues. Thank you so much for hosting the class. It was wonderful. Thank you very much, Amelia. And thank you for showing us such beautiful embroidery.